because you know, ten percent of your sales are going to buy on the spot when you're just talking to them on the phone. But seventy yeah. percent of your buyers just aren't going to buy because they don't trust you yet. Yeah. If, if you can give them this value of like, come to my world, even if they're buying a ticket, right? They could even be buying a ticket and coming out. You say, hey. Oh man, that music never gets old. I love it. I just start bouncing my head to it all the time. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed with your guy Bees, where we talk about everything related to entrepreneurship, but always with a twist of business acquisitions. And today, 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 or tonight, or whatever time you're watching or listening to this, we're going to have a great conversation about something that I have a lot of questions about. All right, so I'm going to be acting as you guys in the audience as I'm asking questions about luxury mastermind retreats. We are going to expose that today with my two guests, Joshua Tapp and Nate Wild, and they are going to blow your minds, I, I believe, right? Because I've had a, a little conversation with Nate about this before, but I got so many questions. But Josh, Nate, thank you guys for coming on Entrepreneurship Exposed. Welcome to, to the podcast and the show. Uh Tell, tell the people more about yourselves, who you are. We'll start with you, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so actually Nate's kind of the, the brains behind the operation. So I always tell people I'm just the pretty face, just the, fat, <laughs> the fatter, older face is, is what we what we call it. But there um, we're, <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to, very glad to be here. Um, you know, when, when Nate first approached me about um, doing this business and say, Hey, let's focus on these luxury mastermind experiences, which is his, his company name. I was like, dude, this is going to be a game changer because my, my background I'm in, um, in podcasting. So, you know, we had a top five podcast for, I don't know, three years, I think, um, globally and in one of the hardest categories to, to enter. And so I've built and four different companies in the marketing sector, all of which have been almost exclusively directed and, and or supported by podcasting. So, um, but the funny part about all of this is I've run masterminds literally for what, Nate, probably last seven years, six, seven years. Long time. We've done over Long 200 time. masterminds, <laughs> love them to death. And, but the number one problem we've always had is running them successfully every single time and the travel element of it, which is just a nightmare. So when Nate approached me on, I was like, sold, man, I'm sold. So that's me. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> you to be more intrigued. Like, I, I got to hear what Nate's pitch was to you. So no, 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 Josh. I came to Josh and said, Josh, you owe me. Come help yeah, me. Yeah, start and I'm like, Who is Nate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was about it. So, um, no, I'll to add to all of that. Like we, Josh and I were working together in podcasting. That's his company. I was doing some contract work. Um, we had so many clients who were coaches, who were business to business entrepreneurs, and every single one of them, it's just like podcasts, just like probably just like buying businesses. Um, they all say, I'm going to do it someday. And yes. get put on the back. Just like every buying single business. time. Every time. And so we're like, why don't we make it just stupid simple for people? We do all the logistics, we do everything on the back end, not just to make it possible but to make it freaking amazing if it's going to be a sales event make it like curate the crap out of it to make sure that people buy <laughs> and make sure that the communication is on point the swag is phenomenal they got like your branded stuff there like just do everything we can to make them the thought leader and make them not have to worry about everything else we do that we're the guy at the clipboard in the background so uh josh i when when we were talking out it was it was we were both getting stoked and uh, we're, we're hyped. So it's been growing since. Nice, nice. I, I would imagine the market for that is, you know, for the, a service like that is uh, pretty high because all of them, my entire network of uh, entrepreneur colleagues and friends and such, everyone's doing different retreats, mastermind retreats and, you know, trying to give more value to these and such. So has that been like a huge boom for you guys, especially since COVID time? Or when did it start? Actually, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> let's, stay, let's start with that. in COVID time, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, hey. The, it really started about a year ago, a little year and a half ago is mm. when we started putting it together. So, yeah, I would say that it's. I mean, every single entrepreneur, every single coach knows they should be doing in-person things. Everybody knows that, like, 
Zoom calls can only get you so far, especially with high ticket offers. Um, and especially with coaching and everybody knows that. All right, guys, before we get into the full episode of Entrepreneurship Exposed, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for supporting this channel. This channel means so much to me. You all mean so much to me because this information is the type of things that I wish that I knew when I was like 17 years old. All right. We're talking about wealth creation strategies, not plays. Never talking about, hey, we can run this quick play to make some quick money. This is all about sustainable strategies that won't go anywhere. Whatever else you may be doing, this information will supplement it and help you take it to a whole nother level. So what I would love to ask each and every one of you is if you could like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, do all of that for me. It supports the channel. It helps us to grow, helps us to get this information out to more people so that we could change more lives. So thank you again for supporting. Make sure that whatever you see in here, whatever you learn in here, that you go and execute on it. And then drop a comment and let me know how it went out for you. Hopefully I even see you in the BBI where I teach how to acquire businesses and everything about entrepreneurship. Let's go. And everybody knows that like in person is so much better. So it's people know it's getting people to, to do it and to, to make it happen that's the kicker, I would say. Can I speak to this too, Beast? Because like, what's so interesting is like, you mentioned like, oh, everybody's got a retreat. Everybody's got their event that they're doing. And the truth is you're right, but they're always doing it as a fulfillment tool. They're like, hey, you're already a client of mine. Now it's a fulfillment tool. When they approached me on this, he's like, what if we were to turn this into a sales tool? Like, and, and I'm like, dude, that's how we've been using it. We've just never turned it into a strategy. And I, I kid you not, this has been the number one best strategy we've employed over seven years is putting people into a room together, even if we have to pay to get them there, right? So not charging them for a ticket, but we pay to put their butt in that seat. If we can get them there, our close rate is astronomically higher than if we were to try and do it through any of our other channels. And so like, that's what LME does, Luxury Mastermind Experience is like, let's turn these into sales opportunities so that you can go out and be schmoozed for a day and then you end up buying somebody's product or service because you're like, now you feel like you kind of owe the person. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> Understood. Okay, so you guys are already, dang, I had a ton of questions and you, some of the things you said already led to more questions and got to process it all. But we'll come back for, for round two. <laughs> Dude, for sure, for sure. So, so, okay, I'm going to put you guys on the fire a little bit, right? Now, you familiar with a guy named uh, Myron Golden? Oh, yeah. Okay, and Myron Golden's worked with Russell Brunson. He's been the mentor of a lot of people and he's taught things like how to sell from stage, for example, and at these different retreats and at these uh, challenges and how to sell in these different types of environments. Now, I love Myron, I especially love his brother. Um, uh, his brother and I are really cool because his brother actually buys businesses. Too. Uh, he's a broker, but, you know, still very related. So um, I like him even better than Myron. However, one of the things I did not like about the whole concept was the i don't like car salesmen i don't like people like hounding me and, and pushing something on me unless it is actual value right so for the longest i have not put on a, a luxury mastermind retreat or a conference or anything along those lines i've done some meetups with my communities and other people and during the meetups i'm only trying to give value i just want to teach most people are like, no, but you can't teach anything because then they won't buy it. I'm like, I, I want to show value. So how do you address someone like me who kind of has a jaded feeling about those type of events when it's when it's only focused on sales, right? Especially if it's someone, your community who already bought with you and now you're like, hey, yeah, come to this mastermind. You're going to learn more. But really what I'm going to do is just upsell you on more things. How do you address someone like me who has that... Uh, distaste for it slightly to, to show me that uh, you know it's not exactly like that. you know it's funny josh and i literally two hours ago we're talking about this specific thing and the point i one of us made i can't remember which of us but we were everything in the business world right now people are constantly asking for you to do something constantly asking like for for value from you so like linkedin you get on linkedin and you have 20 messages of people trying to get you to buy their services or you go to an event and it's all sale, 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 sale. Like it's, it's all just the most frustrating, like, like backwards business 
strategy that really it's I'm, I'm with you on that it's it grinds my gears once people are you've already paid to be somewhere and people like are trying to make you buy more if they haven't provided value for you the the approach that josh and i have been working on and especially with these like luxury masterminds and different pop-ups and events is you've got to prove the the value first that's why josh mentioned like we do a lot of pop-up events where the the thought leader the entrepreneur who's putting it on they they front the the cash for everything like even flights and everything sometimes just to get their ideal person in a room and provide as much value as possible because that's anytime that's happened for me anytime that i've seen that happen through our services everybody's like oh my gosh this guy actually first off it cares it's relationship based mm. but it, it it builds that that trust it builds that understanding between the potential client and the entrepreneur in a huge huge way because it's like okay this person actually wants to provide value they're giving me some of their secrets they're helping me they're workshopping my business with me even though i haven't paid them a dime this is somebody who can help me build my business and i'm not i'm not jaded by them it's somebody who actually is is wants me to succeed because they already spent their money on me so i'm a huge fan of like value first like think about the back end think about your your bottom line but think first and foremost like how am i going to bring some value to this person how am i going to bring an extra couple thousand dollars for this person through their services through what they're doing and then figure out how you can create a business partnership where you're getting paid that's at least my thought with that. i think that makes the most sense well, and, uh, i'll go ahead be sorry no, no, no. I was just saying, I love it. That, that's that's how I view it as well. Like, it needs to be about value. And then as you're providing value, okay, well, this this is this is the way I can do it for you. And then that service can be monetized. But it's not about, hey, I just want to sell you something. And this is how much it's going to cost. And go mortgage your house just so you can put a down payment on it right now. Like, no. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, well, I'm sorry, Josh. What were you going to say? Oh, no, me? no. You're, you're good. I just, so I, I'm more on the, when it comes to our, our, dynamic here with nate and i with luxury mastermind experience i'm more on the filling the event side and he's more on the actual experience side and that's one of the reasons we ended up partnering on this company is because i was like well i can fill these things all day i love filling events and the number one thing and hopefully this answers your question as well because nate you just you just nailed it with value is the biggest problem i see with most events is that people are trying to do multi-purposed events right so i'll give you an example right i get invited to speak on stage three or four times a week and people are like hey come out to my event you can promote it whether it's virtual or in person but then they invite me to these events where it's like there's a trade show so there's, there's a floor where their their goal is to make money off of the floor by selling floor space to vendors yeah. then they have like a hundred speakers on 10 different tracks for four days and if <laughs> i'm a speaker i'm like dude i'm one of a hundred people yes. like i was like, nobody's and like like 20 people enter my room right and then they're not buyers they're usually like the people who are just kind of dancing around do i even want to be in this industry and then then they're also they have a main stage and they're selling from that stage and they have five other people selling from that stage yes. and so the entire event i'm walking around as a participant going wow i just got sold here at this booth and then i went into this room and i got sold by this speaker and i went to the main stage and i got sold by this person and there's like all these buyer behaviors and i'm trying to decide well which of the hundred things am i going to pay for and truthfully that usually ends up being nothing right yeah. i go to these events and then alternatively people will be like hey come to this mastermind come to this retreat you show up you spend three days already having paid them maybe what five ten twenty thousand a hundred thousand dollars to be in the in this retreat and we kind of learn to just expect it, but then it's a bait and switch. It's like, hey, we provide you with all this value, now buy my crap, yeah. right? So the, the way that we've we've seen to fill these events, this is how I've been leveraging even just my relationship with Nate, is we, I will actually pay to have people show up to an event because I know it already, I have a $25,000 mastermind that I sell. That's what I sell um, as my core product in my other company. And what I found was that um, it cost me like $2,000 to acquire a customer. So I said, Nate, well, why don't we just pay $1,000 per person? I didn't even say this. Nate came to me with this. But hey, pay $1,000 per person. If I can get a 50% close rate here, that's already what it's costing me anyways, but I can speed it up. And then I can come to somebody like UBs and say, dude, you should totally be doing this. You should be in my mastermind. And I can be trying to sell you on my mastermind. And if you're like, well, you know, I kind of want to, but I'd love to just experience it first. I say, great, let me pay for you to come out here. We're going to do a mastermind for a day or two. And then you can decide if you want to buy the service, right? 
But what's interesting is the perception is so different for you as the attendee because you're preconditioned to go, am I going to buy this by the time you get there? And you're already thinking about buying it. And I'm not bait and switching you. I'm not like, oh, here's a cool event. Oh, and by the way, I'm just going to nonchalantly throw a $25,000 offer in your face, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Not to throw anybody under the bus on this one. <laughs> but we, we've just seen it works really well as like, because, you know, like 10% of your sales are going to buy on the spot when you're just talking to them on the phone. But 70% of your buyers just aren't going to buy because they don't trust you yet. Yeah. If, if you can give them this value of like, come to my world, even if they're buying a ticket, right? They could even be buying a ticket and coming out. You say, hey, you can pay for a ticket. And if you decide you want to join the mastermind, we're just going to roll that into your ticket or roll that, roll your ticket sale into the mastermind. Yeah. Right. And, and, but we've preconditioned them to come with a buying, with a buying intentionality versus them coming in and going, bait, being bait switched. Because then they're having to make a decision in, in 30 seconds versus in over the course of a month before they show up to this event. Does that make sense? Very interesting. Very interesting. And, you know, one of the words that you mentioned uh, more than once and Nate mentioned was experience, right? You said, like, uh, in charge of the experience. I love that because I attend a hundred freaking conferences and masterminds and stuff. But the ones that have an experience that 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 make me feel a different way about it, the ones that I come back talking about it for months after, <laughs> like that is different. So I don't even know if I should be saying this on this episode, but <laughs> I finally decided that I was going to do. I might have told you this too, Nate. I finally decided that I'm going to do a, a conference slash mastermind or something. Right? I'm not sure which one the classic because I consider the conference bigger masterminds should be a little bit more intimate um but i'm doing it in puerto rico that's a very specific reason why i want to do it in puerto rico there was some i was there recently there was a, a, a spot that i was like oh this is it this has to be it and it sold me so in that essence are you saying that you would potentially pay people what their flight cover their flight to come and no entry fee just you cover their flight and they, they pay their hotel maybe or something and then make it like explain that you know walk me through that what that would look like yeah we i mean we have a couple clients that we're, we're working with and some potential clients as well who they're covering everything like people don't pay a penny like maybe they pay for an uber to the airport <laughs> and that's <laughs> it like we cover flights hotels everything and these guys are paying five to ten thousand dollars per person to get them in a room 10 to 20 people um so the event's like 100 200 grand but it's worth every single penny to them because they know they're going to walk out with partnerships and everything that's five six hundred thousand dollars so it really depends on what you're what you are bringing to people and uh figuring out what what matches so really i, I think yeah absolutely it's it's there's a spectrum to what you can do and what sort of value you can offer a lot of our the people we work with are it's they fly out they get their hotel but then we have an amazing experience and we curate the room as much as possible for them um with the venue with some sort of excursion to go do something amazing that they wouldn't normally be able to do um and then maybe some food and a luxury restaurant or something oh, on top of that so food. <laughs> of course <laughs> oh, for sure that's that's when you break break bread with people that uh that makes a big difference so especially uh, when it's dribbling down your chin and yeah, oh, you see the yeah. Side when you spill on yourself yeah it's yeah. part of the experience like oh man i remember that food it, and it was just dribbling down and <laughs> man, that twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> but okay. that's when you decide yeah so, so I, I like that i like it uh it's very um ingenious it's, you know unique i would say in the space now when you your your team is finding the the customers the you know the, the attendees for your client who's hosting the retreat. How are you finding the right ones that are more likely to convert? How do Can you I speak on this, Nate? Gosh, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna let this you This is definitely a me time. question. I just, if you have something to say, you want to step on your toes. But um, I'm, a, I'm gonna illustrate this with a story. So uh, literally like three weeks ago, uh, or it was like four weeks ago, I met this guy um, through a mutual connection. This guy has six different multi-billion dollar companies, okay? And he's like, 
he's like, Josh, I want to do a partnership with you. So what does he do? He flies me out, puts me on his private yacht, puts me up in a five-star hotel, all like pays for my flights, does everything, right? I show up. Um, what do you think I'm going to do when I get there? Like I'm already planning to buy from this guy, right? Or to, to partner with him or whatever. And he didn't, he didn't ever pitch me anything. He just like, what if we did a partnership? And I'm like, sold, let's do it. So he flew me out there, right? But he gave me the best dinner of my life too, by the way, it was a four hours of eating food. I felt like freaking so gluttonous, but it was amazing. Um, I think it's called steak 954, 945. I guess you should try it out sometime. It's in, in Miami. Or it's in, in Miami? Uh, yeah, it's in Miami. Or it's up in Fort Lauderdale. That's where I live. Oh man, go try it out. It's freaking amazing. Go steak try it. Steak 954? Steak 954, 945, one of the two. Go try it out. 954, that's yeah, they're, not, they're not sponsoring me. Just, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but, uh, I digress. But, yeah, but we're kind of coming back to it, right? Is that, is that the perception that I had drove the reason why I went out there, right? He was covering everything for me. It was actually on a weekend. I wasn't going to be busy anyways. I was like, why not? But he literally said next weekend. And I flew out, right? But then here's the same thing. So literally three weeks ago, I had the same idea of, hey, let me put, um, let me put, you know, 30 people into a room, 40 people into a room. All I did is I'm actually looking for the people who, like I mentioned earlier, are either already interested in what I'm doing or, and this is where I tell people to start. It's like, you start with the people that you've been working on for a year who are always like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to buy from you. Yeah, I'm going to buy from you. You go, great, show up, right? Because if they won't show up, they're not interested anymore. You can remove them from your list. But if they do show up, they're they're nine times more likely. Literally, there's I'm not gonna go to the study. There's it's nine times more likely that if they're in person, they're gonna buy from you than if they are over Zoom. So you've been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying, but if you get them to show up and that heat of the moment, they're going to buy. But so I usually start there. But then the second thing is that what most people don't realize is that when you charge for an event, um, and you're trying to sell to people with money, right? So I'm just going to assume that if you're doing an event like this, you're trying to sell a high ticket product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we agree is that is like the founding point? Yeah. If you're trying to sell something and I'm going to establish that high ticket is at least $10,000, okay? 10 grand. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to sell a $10,000 product, you have to sell to somebody who has money. Mm -hmm. That should be a no brainer, right? We need somebody who has money who can give me $10,000. Now let's, let's put it on a scale if you're trying to sell like a $25,000 or $50,000 thing. If I invite you to an event and I charge um, $2,000, and I say, hey, bees, come check this out, right? You're going to go, it's probably just another conference. It's like everybody else's. Um, you know, it's they're, they're going to look at this and they're going to go, okay, if, if, if it's only $2,000, who's actually going to be in the room, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I have found if you want to attract a successful clientele, people, if people who are wealthy, if you want to attract those who are wealthy, you have to do one of two things. You have to either charge a ton of money. So, you know, twenty five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to be in that room and you make it an incredible experience. You hire Nate, work with LME, right? We'll give you an amazing experience. Mm. So you charge a ton of money so they know that wow, this is curated. Or you pay their way. Right? Mm. Because if you pay their way, it's saying, I wanna work with you. And I'm gonna show you how much I wanna work with you. Is that making sense? But if, if you try to charge like two thousand, five thousand, you're gonna keep attracting broke people and you're gonna go, Why is this happening? Why, why am I only attracting broke people? And it's because of your pricing, because price drives perception. So it's true. And I agree with that 100%. And it's part of why I don't. Now, mind you, we're in Black Friday and Cyber Monday. <laughs> that stuff. So, yeah, I make a little discount on certain things sometimes. But uh, my core product or, you know, uh, sir, I say service. My core service is uh, educating people on how to acquire businesses. Whether they do the, tr 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 the tongue twister, <laughs> traditional <laughs> way, <laughs> or they do things like an LBO, leverage buyout, in order to structure the deal and get it with uh, little to no money out of their pocket. And <clears throat> I always tell people that I, I believe it's more important for you to learn it. And that's actually the lowest uh, offering I have. You can learn it for like five thousand dollars, right? Yeah. Learn it. You're learning it with the community, right? And the reason why I don't discount that pretty much ever except for black friday and uh cyber monday <laughs> <laughs> breaking his cardinal rule <laughs> <laughs> but the, the reason i don't discount it is because that's it's worth way more than that why would right. i ever bring that down right and it's just going to be more work for me if i'm bringing in people who aren't ready for it and aren't the right buyers and don't have enough money to do the additional things that need to happen because you know people say oh so you can really buy a business with no money out of your pocket sure but don't focus on that 
focus on the fact that you should buy a business, a cash flowing business, instead of starting one from scratch because your chances of success are better with the um, the acquisition. All right, so that five thousand dollar offering, I never discount it, except for Black Friday. I have to keep saying that, um, and I believe those the the people who come into that. It benefits me because I'm creating other investors. Right. How are we going to do deals together? Right. So, so for me, and you see, Britt just said consumer psychology overall. Right. Is if I know that I'm going to help you to achieve wealth through business acquisitions, and I don't, you know, go too crazy with how much it costs or whatever for you to learn it, then it's it's because I also know that it's going to benefit me later as I create a larger network of investors where we can. Do acquisitions together and such, but of course right. the, the higher ticket ones, the twenty-five, the hundred k ones, those are what I would assume. And you mentioned I would do a, a mastermind, right? Right. And those would be more like done with me rather than you learn it for exactly. Yourself. Exactly. And, you know, actually, just to kind of to your point, because this is what's so fun about when you buy businesses. There's so many correlations between business I've, I've bought assets i've never actually fully bought a full company piece so hopefully you don't slap me on the hand for that one but I'm, sure. no, I, I, I'm an assets guy i'm like give me your list man that's all i really want <laughs> um, <laughs> well oh wait, wait josh I, I know you're about to say something please don't forget but i have I to think forget. so you know that one of the things that we also do is we buy zero dollar traffic assets so instead of going and you know, running ads and I got to pay a bunch of money to test and split test before I could finally find the target audience. And I sell, uh, I always use this as an example. I sell dog accessories, collars and leashes and whatnot. Right. Right. Well, I could go to a TikTok page or IG page. I love dogs and they got 500,000 followers. Okay. Most likely a good portion of those people love dogs. Now I can actually acquire that page from them, just like how you would buy a business. Right. So I acquire the page and now I can literally promote to my direct audience rather than having to go through the Facebook testing for all the ads and everything. So good. So, <laughs> so we do, like, we, when we get a list of buyers, that's all we're doing. So that's I, all we do. There you go. Okay. All right. I'll I, you now I'm genuinely curious though about how you're acquiring these because it's been a pain in the butt for us. So we'll have to have a conversation yeah, offline. I'll tell you some but, tactics on that. But a lot of these worlds merge, right? And like Nate, Nate was talking to me about this the other day. That I thought was so interesting is that when when you look at um, putting on an event like this, right? We've been talking. Hey. What, what if you were to bring 20 people into a room and you were to pay a thousand dollars per person to come to this, right? So you're going to give them, a, you're maybe not paying their flights, but you're like, Hey, I'm going to cover um, food and we're going to give them a really incredible experience and swag and all this other fun stuff, right? We're going to go enjoy ourselves for a day, two days. It's going to cost you a thousand dollars per person, right? So it's going to cost you 20 grand if you invite 20 people. And some people will go, Oh man, I don't know if I'm going to spend $20,000 on a hope and a prayer. This is what's cool. You'll probably talk about this is OPM, right? Other people's money. There are people out there who will sponsor something like this in a heartbeat. They'll cover the entire cost for you and they'll, they'll make sure they're like, Hey, as long as I can stand up for 30 minutes and pitch what I do, I'll drop the $20,000. It's crazy. I mean, they're, yeah, absolutely crazy. So you can have other people sponsor the events and cover the cost. Is that a part of your service of your company to help find the sponsors too? Uh, more or less. It I'm not going to say we find the sponsors, but I'm going to tell you <laughs> there, there are eight yeah, to 10 people around you who would do this in a heartbeat. Uh, so yeah, yeah. what we look at is like, hey, could we take and either you get a sponsor or you might say, you know what, um, this first one, if I could, if I could spend five thousand dollars and I could come out with, what was your your offer cost? Bees five thousand. Oh, for the lowest ticket, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is your highest? T- am I allowed to ask this? How high is your highest ticket? A uh, hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. Oh, just hundred thousand. So let's say he says. <laughs> He's like, okay, my goal is like, I'm going to bring a room together. I'm going to spend $5,000, but I'm going to get one sale at 100K. It's a no brainer, right? So what you could do is you could go to three of your other buddies who have your ideal audience. You say, hey, we're all going to invite our five best clients to come to this, right? And all four of you are going to be the hosts and split the cost. It's going to cost you five grand each to run this, this sort of event. But then each of you gets that opportunity to basically pitch and to share what you're doing with everybody else in the room. And what's cool about this is for someone like you, Bees, is like you could say, hey, 
if I do this, and even if one person in the entire room buys my $5,000 product, I figured it out. I broke even, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's where it gets really, really fun. And then you try again, right? Maybe improve your pitch, get a little bit better, right? But you're building all this really good will and people mm -hmm. end up buying in the long term. It's, it's cool. It's super right. cool. How often would you recommend someone host a mastermind like that? Once a quarter? Honestly, we usually tell people once a month. Awesome. is is one of the best and honestly what i would say is as often as you can fill them we have people that we're, we're talking to that are like dude if i put my sales team on this we could do once a week or we could do like four in the space of one week um once a month so as often as you can fill them really because really it, it becomes a flywheel because if you pay five thousand you make a hundred thousand reinvest twenty thousand of that yeah. do it again make five hundred thousand just reinvest just keep going keep going you make great revenue on the back end the part we haven't been talking about a lot is if you get 20 people in a room once a month for a year that's what that's 240 people i think my math is right there that's mm -hmm. a bunch of people who are your ideal client who have your swag who think you are the freaking shiz <laughs> and like just love everything you're doing a lot of them are probably your clients now and yep. so if you can do that in a year, like that's amazing. Just the flywheel that you can create with this is killer. It's such a good, like just lead generation I love uh, it. hamster wheel. <laughs> and if you have a sales team, it's like filling these isn't hard. And what's cool, yeah. if, you, no. if you don't have a sales team, if you can do one, if you get 20 people in a room, mm. if you want to fill the next one, where do you get the next 20 people? You go back to those original 20 and say, who needs to be in a room like this? right? Mm. You'll get three to five because you just schmoozed them for a day, man. They're like stoked. Like, dude, you took me, I raced a Ferrari for the first time in my life. I was on a private jet for the first time in my life. I was on a yacht for the first time in my life. Yeah. Josh, Josh and Nate will pay for you to come do that. Right. <laughs> that's, that's when people go, Oh wow. Okay. Like I can come and do these really cool experiences. Again, hence the experience side that you were talking about bees that gets people to come back and filling them gets I always tell people, stop worrying about filling it. It's not hard to fill it. It's really easy to get people in the room. It's all about positioning. Very interesting. You guys got my mind spinning. A lot of <laughs> thoughts from my Puerto Rico trip and all. <laughs> I love it. Let's, let's sum it up for everybody, right? Let's go into our pop segment right now. It's time that we pop the luxury mastermind retreats, right? So we got to talk about the pros, the opportunities, and the problems that people should be aware of when you're getting into luxury mastermind retreats space. So tell, t go ahead and just run through it. What are the pros of getting into this space? I would say, so the pros, honestly, the biggest pro is lead generation for this and you can use these retreats for a number of different things but the network you grow the the people that you build it's the lead generation is amazing and i i guess i should ask is that a pro or is that an opportunity because i feel like those two kind of like <laughs> me meld into one another the opportunity is the sale man the opportunity is a sale <laughs> hey, that's fair that's fair so you know, no, I mean, I, this compared to, oh, sorry, go ahead, Beast. No, 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 you finish, finish your thought, Nick, because I agree with what sure. you're saying. I was going to say this compared to like, you see these LinkedIn webinars and, and just there the we go. general sales call and stuff like that. It, like, that's really, if you're thinking, what's the pros of this compared to going and spending a tenth of the money on this? And, and really, if you spend a tenth of the money, you're not going to close 30, 40, 50 80 percent of the room like you would in this um the biggest pro to me is like you're the thought leader you are the industry icon every single person who comes to this event is like yeah bees is the guy like i'm never going to talk to another guy who does industry building because they're not schmoozing me they're not taking me to puerto rico like bees is my guy like i have a relationship there so i think the biggest pro for anybody who's like i want to be tony robbins i want to be whoever that is this is like this is how you start to make the relationships to do that so obviously there's a pathway there and this isn't like you're there obviously but this is this is how you start to truly add value in the way that they that they do and they always have so yeah that. i'd say that's the biggest pro on the back end i love that because and you hit exactly right when i was about to interrupt you went into exactly what i was going to say and this <laughs> reminds me of uh you know most people using the webinars as lead generation but the thing with a webinar is you need it to be a lower cost, a lower ticket 
right? It's, it's no barrier of entry. They watch the webinar. Okay, hey, yeah, buy it. Oh, you just already paid for it. Well, if you just pay a thousand more, you, you do the upsells and all that type of stuff, right? But this is different. This is this is more personal. This is you know you, you get to really see who you're going to be working with rather than the random people that are coming in through webinars. This is very interesting, and I, I agree that that is a, a a pro for sure. So yeah, kudos to y'all for that. So what about opportunities? What? Oh yeah, and I think this fits right into opportunities with it. And the people that we work with, the the best clients are people who are trying to run high ticket masterminds. Like we also work with people who do, who are investors or are looking for investors. We work with people who are financial services. Joshua, am I missing? Like obviously agencies, high ticket agencies, agencies yeah, but masterminds. Mm the the type of I, and honestly this is an opportunity with it the type of relationships that you get doing something like this you cannot get anywhere else it's like in-person events I, mean, I think we've all been to those in-person events whether they're small or big that is the best way to make solid relationships with people you cannot do it on a zoom call i at least in my opinion i'm i'm a guy who in-person activity or in-person events are my thing i thrive in person so that's that's half of where this came from but um for that type of group for that type of sale it's just become so stinking effective and the opportunity is a thriving business that is just running just moving forward over and over and over again so josh you were going to say uh, something I, I was i would say too is and thanks for sharing that nate i i think where a lot of people miss the opportunity with this is this is the introverts dream sales opportunity because introverts hate standing on stage like they're like hey i, I want to but they're like terrified to go and step out and do it right and truth if you're an introvert you probably suck at selling right you're going i hate selling it stresses me out so the worst part of my day is having to hop on and sell somebody right um or i just maybe i love it but it's just never working the truth is that somebody who's introverted thrives. They absolutely thrive in events like this. And if you're an extrovert, you're going to love it because you just like being bubbly and excitable, right? But I think there's a big opportunity in there for those of you who are like, hey, I'm, I'm an introvert type. But also is when you're, when you're coming to an event like this and you're running events like this, like Nate's mentioned a couple times, you get established as the industry authority and everybody is vying for your time you're at this event people are trying to pull you to the side to like ask you a couple questions pull you to the side and that's where you're going to elevate yourself as that authority and it builds such a solid uh, reputation truthfully in, in the industry to where people really love you and want to work with you in the long term so that's definitely an opportunity awesome awesome but yeah. now the most important most important and we know all the good stuff and we've been talking about all the good stuff all along but what about the problems what do people need to be aware of and wary of? And that, it's not that you don't get into it. It's just you got to know about these problems so you can navigate it right. I, Nate, are you I mean, I'll, I'll hit. Go ahead. Oh, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm sure like, you're going to say I, the exact same thing. I experience what the cons are. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of cons to doing events. Number one, travel coordination is ridiculous. Hence why Nate's company has been doing so well. It's like if you do these wrong, it becomes a horrible experience for them. They're never going to want to come back. Right, that's number one. So maybe, maybe we've been throwing out that word experience, but it could be a bad experience. Too. It could be a horrible experience. Um, no, for sure. I hate to always like go off on tangential stories, but that trip where I just said I flew out, I was on the private yacht, all this stuff. Yeah. They flew me out, but it was like the most. It was the worst nightmare of a flight I've ever had. Truthfully, it was awful. And so it started and it ended the event in a really horrible way for me. Luckily, I still did business with the guy, but I'm like, I'm always going to remember how horrible the Atlanta airport is. Sorry, Atlanteans. Yes, it is. <laughs> Literally the worst airport on the planet. Um, and then the uh, um, another big con that I would I would say for most people if they're coming at something like this is that one of the biggest cons about doing something like this is there is a big financial risk to it, right? Is that you're if you're going to do it the way we're talking about, you're going to drop twenty grand on it, right? Again, we mentioned there's ways to hedge that, but it's a big risk. I mean, there's some some big money risk involved there. And then the third thing is if you're trying, to, like a big con of this is you can't really make it like a side gig. It's something that needs to become a core piece of what you're doing. Otherwise, it's virtually impossible. Because if you're trying to, for example, sell this, right? You're trying to, to go out and actually fill these events. If you're just kind of, pardon the French, but half ass it, right? And you go out and you're, you know, every once in a while you're talking about it you're not buying yourself or you're, you're not going to be able to fill it. 
right? And so the, that kind of leads to the last con I would say is like, it's filling the event is actually one of the hardest pieces of it. We obviously can help make that easier, but a lot of it is that people get so hung up on, well, I've got to fill it, I've got to fill it, i got to fill it. And they do all these dumb ways that people on YouTube, or I don't know who the heck is teaching these ways, but they just don't work. And people are trying to, to sell tickets or, or get people to come to an event and they just don't work. And if you get hung up in that process, it can be an extreme time waster. I mean, extreme time waster. So I, I will say like, just as kind of like a, hopefully puts a pretty bow on it. This is why Nate built this idea is because we had a couple events that we ran in my company that just did not go smoothly. And this is before LME came to be. And, and he was like, dude, if we could just avoid this and this and this and this and this, all of a sudden, you know, problem solved. You've got an event that's running and producing your sales. I, I would say those are kind of the biggest cons though just a lot of a lot of risk around the cash and the time and, and filling the event understood understood so a quick chance a tangential thing before we move on because you mentioned atlanta being like one of the worst uh, airports i recently read an article that said it's one of the best airports i was like what oh yeah <laughs> baloney who wrote that somebody's never been there you know <laughs> So I mean, 12 I flights I landed and I literally had to sprint two terminals to get to my yeah. before they close the gate. I'm like, come yeah, on. That's insane. But Insanity. We, and we, I got we, lost we, three times. That's that's it. Neither here nor there. But <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like it. I, I mean, it, you know, it's definitely a need. It's definitely the experience aspect of it. Um, it's definitely a need to... Uh, do it often. I understand the part that you're saying about they got to really, you have to make it part of your core strategy, um, promote it well enough. So, you know, this, this is very interesting. I'm very intrigued. It's something I'm going to be interested in, but I got, I got a question, two questions for y'all. The first one is if you can acquire a business that would help with what you guys are doing, what type of business would it be? Hey, that one's you. I've got ideas. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm thinking this through. I mean, honestly, first and foremost, we've been talking about and we're trying to build out a swag arm of our company. And the first plan was just to go and buy the equipment and get a warehouse to build it all out. But if there's a company that already had that, they could do branded shirts, branded hats, branded Huge. all that stuff. That would be insane. That would change everything. So um, that's the first one. Even that's like that's travel agencies. There we go. Yeah. Like, okay. Travel that's what I was going to say as a travel agency. <laughs> that's, that was my other idea. A travel agency. Yeah. And it, it, it's interesting that you said what you said, though, Nate, because my second question was going to be more around I've been to some events, experiences where they went all out. I mean, you walked in and yeah. the brand is shining in gold on the floor somehow and the 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 the, the poles of the staircase has like their brand I, I don't even know what to like make up but it's crazy like they they go all out and i was gonna ask do you guys do that as well do you help to really take it to that next level but hell acquire a company that does and then <laughs> you know. well that's to your point bees i was having a conversation with a guy just a couple weeks ago about uh starting to implement some of the other senses like literally if we do a room block and we have the space have candles and stuff and different scents in their room to get them in the right headspace so yes yeah absolutely this is like we want to curate this not just the travel not just making sure that you don't fly through atlanta or anything but like making sure that everything builds the right container for business for the sale for everything that's like that's the type of stuff where we shine in this so oh yeah you gotta you gotta go all out on this so sight uh the different things and all the ornaments everywhere uh hearing uh maybe we have a violinist case <laughs> uh uh smell of, of course the aromatherapy but maybe food aroma right everybody loves food <laughs> i'm just going through things in my head <laughs> Well, see, all there's, there's so much you can do like yeah. people just go about like 20 percent of what you can do and then they're happy because in-person events are always pretty successful pretty well done but if you go like it's always like what if humans use 100 percent of their brain what yeah. if you did 100 percent of what you could do for your potential clients for your event dude it, it's a game changer everybody's gonna walk in and never forget that experience because it'll be like 
yeah, that's that smell, the way things look, the way it happened, the way Bees was on the stage, like perfect. That's it changes the game. <laughs> and the personal masseuse for each person for Aspects. Yeah, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I think what Nate and the LME experience team do better than anybody else too, and I think is so unique, is that they make the attendee the hero. But at the same time, they also make the host the hero. And they also make the busboy the hero. It's really <laughs> interesting because you, you mentioned like as an attendee showing up, oh, they had their brand on the floor. It was beautiful. And then on the poles and everything, that didn't make you feel like the hero. You're like, wow, this is a pretty legit company. That made them the hero, right? But instead, like with what Nate does, is what's hilarious, right? It's like somebody who's never had this experience before. They get off the plane after having sat in like a first class seat, right? They're in a really amazing seat. They hop off the plane, or sometimes it's like a private flight. They hop off the plane, and there's somebody, there's a driver there who walks right up to them, knows who they are, brings them to their to a helicopter, to a car, drives them to a helicopter. They fly in in a helicopter in the middle of the resort, so they feel really cool. The host is standing there like, ah, right, like, oh, I'm so excited to have you come. It's, it's amazing. And like you experience that and it doesn't even cost that much more. That's what's sickening. But these people are like, well, yeah, I spent like $50,000 on putting my brand on the wall. You're like, dude, they already know who you are. They're here. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's fly the, the helicopter to the yacht in the ocean, land on that. Then we get on a submarine. <laughs> I love it though. Oh, oh, look, Britt said, Go with citrus and pine. You're welcome. She's a oh, neuroscientist. Yeah, that's a good scent. She, she's a neuroscientist. We so love she, oh. She's focused on those type of things and how to <laughs> listen to the behavior and everything. So That's awesome. Hey, I, Game I, changer. I, think, I think you guys have blown my mind. You've, got, you've given me a lot to think about. Uh, I'm going to have to have patience about my Puerto Rico event <laughs> and other things. <laughs> sure. But, um, but man, it, this is awesome. I mean, I, mean, I, I think you really helped us to expose luxury mastermind retreats right we got more insight the good and the bad the good the bad and the ugly in it so i'm really excited about this now tell, tell everybody where they can find you how to connect with you and how to you know get into the lme service as well i'll say me first so i honestly the best way is through linkedin you'll find if you go and look for it we, this may change by the time this episode comes out but i have up to this point i have exclusively done this on a on an in, not in person but a, a referral basis i don't have a website up i don't have anything it's just we are connecting and pushing this out and i want people to go through me so go chat on linkedin and and uh connect with me on there that's the best way for me josh has uh, other ways yeah. I'm sure for him well I, absolutely and I, I would just say like i'm kind of the one that made him do that because he's like okay let's build the website on day one i'm like screw yeah. website we're gonna make money first <laughs> my philosophy but anyways um best place to go with me is actually my website pantheon.fm is where you can connect with me um and that's obviously you can get access to us our team and everything else and and uh if you want to get to nate you have to go through me I'm just kidding. You, 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 can go, you can go on his LinkedIn. Josh is my gatekeeper. Yeah, yeah. He hired me as a very expensive secretary. Yeah. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, man. Well, oh, guys. Man. In my Instagram, it's a, that's my personal. Feel free to connect with me on there, but I might take a while to get back to you. <laughs> no worries. We'll make sure we put all that information down in the description for everybody to, to be able to uh, find you guys and to connect with LME and to start their luxury mastermind retreats. Uh, I know I'm doing it, and I expect everybody that's listening that you should tap into this. This is, this is amazing. But, um, uh, man, Josh, Nate, you guys have been great. This is an awesome conversation. I think you're right. We do have to have a part two of it because <laughs> there's a lot more to discuss. I'm, I'm going to go through the whole uh, logistics of my Puerto Rico uh, trip on air. <laughs> so, <laughs> <we're doing it. laughs> we hope so. But, um, for sure, for sure. Well, guys, thank you again for coming on Entrepreneurship Exposed and helping us to expose the luxury mastermind retreats industry. And I look forward to working with you all and doing so much more. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. And uh, everybody in the audience, you already know what to do. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or whether you're on a podcast platform, make sure you are subscribed. If it's on YouTube, make sure you like and comment. Make sure that you share this with everybody that you know because they need to hear this conversation. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you have that bell too so that you don't miss conversations like this because we are always going to talk about everything related to entrepreneurship with a twist of business acquisitions. 
I will see you all on the next episode. Nate, Josh, thank you guys again. Thanks, peace. Oh.